makes sense. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I've got the skybox here. I'm going to grab this uh, other one, and then boom. And you can see my whole level gets shaded red, right? Because it's, it's actually reading ambient light from the sky um, directionally. And so we can actually change things um, quite vastly just by changing our sky or changing the lights, whatever, and lights will bounce and hit other surfaces. So if I you know, have a white table with a red cube and I shine a white light on it, well, red's going to spill onto the table because that's how pigmentation works. And, and you can define a surface's uh, roughness versus its metallic properties. There's a lot of subsurface scattering, and that's all built in. It's just sliders. Something is metal, it's not metal, right? Um, as an example, I've got uh, this piece of ground. So with this piece of ground, let me do, um, let me see, it's like super smooth. You can actually see how it changes now. If I look down here, I see on this rock the reflection of the sky because it's really, really smooth. And it's not smooth, and it is smooth. Um, I can even change it to be this one where I can say this is super metal. Um, and metal doesn't mean what most people think it means. Um, right? It's not like a Dragon Force album. Um, <laughs> I know. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> the metal is affected less by albedo because it doesn't allow subsurface scattering. The light doesn't penetrate, bounce around, and come out. Um, yeah. I'm so sorry. All very cool, but not by men. Oh, so, well then. Okay, well, sorry, Paul. But when we're talking about the architectural applications, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking in terms of building a home that's you know facing south versus facing west versus. Tino you want to be able to move the light. I'm talking about in real in reality. Yeah. You know, in real time, not in not in your community game here. Okay. But could I say what would my house look like on a mountaintop facing west in Colorado versus the same house in California? No. So I'm talking about. I'm sure that some designer has has created a GPS um, related application, so it's. So sure. You don't have to answer. I apologize. No, there's actually a great demo there, but it wasn't. Cool. There's an add-on on the asset store. It's ten dollars. Called Distant Skies, okay. and you can plug in where you're at. It'll do the atmospheric scattering uh, to, for different humidities and stuff like that, and also sun paths. That's what I meant. All right, uh, thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, but I mean, you have to like load the model of your home into the software yeah. to see it. But yeah, I mean, okay, cool. but thank we can you. actually. So Unity is used a lot for uh, GIS. Um, they're pulling a lot of real-time data from satellites and stuff like that. Uh, NASA is doing something really cool with it, um, and it's it's pretty slick. You can do a lot of real-time stuff. You, you had a question right there. Yeah. So we are plugging for Unity and saw that it's free and can use it. But for AR, I've seen that they have to download plugins, and there are so many different. I was wondering if you have any recommendations. Yeah. So so she asked about like um, like with VR. Obviously, I didn't install any plugins or whatever. You need to support it, right? Uh, but with AR, there, there's no native integration yet, and that's true. AR is kind of a year or two behind VR as far as what works and whatever. It takes more processing and stuff like that. Um, and so you generally go out, you download a plugin, it, it's built for Unity, and then Unity does does AR. Um, so I work mostly with Euphoria. Um, maybe three or four years ago, there was a sea of different AR applications, and Euphoria was just one of them. And now there's like two because Euphoria kind of just Beat the rest of them. There's like it does like super awesome stuff. I love it. Um, so you can do 3D object tracking, image tracking, smart tracking, terrain tracking, like just also really cool stuff. Uh, I believe that's what they use. So Pokemon Go was made with Unity, and I believe they used Euphoria for the image tracking. Thank you. Uh, sir, why are most VR events and, and games uh, have kind of that? like a childlike or, or simplistic? Is it the graphical processing units that, that makes the realism a, a challenge or? No, uh, you're, so you're saying why do VR games have like a lot of that? Yeah, why, why are they more cartoony than, you know, I'm really in Tomb Raider? Yeah, um, so, the, the, so the question is why do VR games tend to be more cartoony? Um, so there's a term a lot of people may be familiar with called Uncanny Valley. And what that means is something gets closer to being real the more creepy it is. Right? And everyone who's ever had a real doll, uh, or like the little baby dolls that wet themselves, know what I'm talking about. They're super freaking creepy, right? Um, the ones you pick up and they look at you and stuff, you're like, no. Uh, <laughs> so in VR, it's like that. Like, if I'm playing a game right now and I look at my monitor and I'm looking at a character and the character looks at me, I'm looking at a screen and the character's looking at a screen and that's fine. But in VR, I'm looking at the character and it's looking me in the eyes. 
right? And that's really, really, really weird. Right? They built an, an application about a year ago to test like social awkwardness and, and cues and behavior, or basically had a character get really too close to you and just kind of look at you. And it's not real, but you felt super uncomfortable the whole time. If you turned, they were just like, hey, you know? <laughs> <laughs> And no one wanted to do it for more than like 10 seconds. Right? It's really, really weird, right? And so, two parts. Some like like mobile and stuff like that. They don't have the raw uh, processing power to do like better graphics, right? But desktops do. They can do cool stuff. But uh, you get into this when it's when it's kind of close, when it's really close, but it's not exact. It's really, really, really uncomfortable. And so we tend to do a lot of sci-fi, a lot of monsters, a lot of low poly or childish this or that because it's cute then, it's fun, it's a cartoon. Um, the closer it gets to being real, the much more creepy it becomes. Yeah. It stops being fun very quickly. Yes? On that note, how many nightmares have you had about your little uh, Viking friend? Uh, no, me and Clive are cool. We don't, uh, we don't fight too much. His name is Eric, I call him Clive. <laughs> um, no, it's not bad. What's interesting though is Almost everyone uh, who the first, like at least you know that I, I, I in my family or friends or whatever, the first time they play VR games for maybe a couple hours, that night they always have dreams about it, right? And it seems really weird, right? It is kind of weird. But again, it's how your brain imprints it is real, and so it's just like you have dreams about the stuff you did that day or whatever. To you, you did that stuff, and it really stood out because it's stuff you wouldn't normally do. All right? um, it's interesting, there's a, one VR experience called the Blue, the Blue VR. And all it is is you're on a ship, and a whale comes up, you look at the whale, it looks at you, and it swims away. Right? It's nothing extreme, there's no real interaction, you, you just experience it. It's amazing how many people become like crazy afraid, like super afraid, they just, I gotta stop, I gotta stop. And you know, everyone else is like, uh, uh, uh. But, but no, those are the people that would survive with a lion attack, because that's the right emotion to feel, <laughs> being underwater, looking at a whale, you should be afraid. It's a really uncomfortable experience. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Actually going underwater and swimming with a whale, it's really dangerous, right? And again, it's, it's real to you in that moment. It's really, really powerful. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. It, it doesn't matter who you are, the toughest guy, the little kid, whatever. Some people, they can handle it. Some people get terrified. And that's really the right behavior. Yeah. Yes? Can you talk about pricing? Pricing of what? Unity and... <coughs> so... Unity Personal Edition is completely free, and there is no paywall. So there's nothing that Pro can do that free can't do, right? So we also have Unity Plus and Unity Pro, and what those do is we have Unity Cloud services, like different types of ads, uh, analytics, uh, team uh, add-ons like uh, Collaborate and stuff like that, that you get higher tiers of with Plus and Pro. Plus, I believe, is 30 bucks a month, Pro is 75 That's a guess, I don't remember. Uh, I'm not in sales, um, but, uh, but if you're looking to try it out, personal can do everything that pro can do in engine, and then you think, oh, I, I, I want these other team tools, I want uh, advanced debugging and stuff like that, that's when you get into like plus and pro. Um, there are also EULA requirements, so if you, like your company, your, your studio, and I don't really know exactly how it works, if your studio makes over 100,000 a year, something like that, then you have to buy plus and 250,000, you have to buy pro. Um, which is why most people do that, but a lot of people, they like the higher tiers of cloud build and stuff like that, so they go with like cloud server pro. It really depends on what you're doing. Um, but yeah, but you can try it out and use it extendedly for free. Right? Um, and most of the stuff we partner with, we work out deals to get free, like for personal or whatever. So like you get um, Visual Studio for free, you can install your need personal. Um, it's just packaged with it. Uh, Vuforia has, uh, is free for, um, most of it's you know normal stuff and only charges for like the cloud-based services and things like that. Yeah. <coughs> a follow-up uh, for an experienced developer, which is not me. How long would it take to capture eighty percent of uh, what's available in Unity? Eighty percent? I don't know. I've been using it for like six years. I think I'm maybe at twenty percent. Uh, it's it's it, it's deep. Right? There's massive tool sets. I mean, we tons of physics. I mean, audio has simple parts, but there's audio mixers and advanced audio. Which, there's just so much stuff. Um, I mean, it, it's it's super duper easy to get started. I'll actually show you here really shortly. Um, it's really just drag and drop and whatever. But then the amount of little crazy cool things you can do to squeeze out of it, like there's just so many. Yeah. 
I'll introduce them all the time. So. For developers, there's code wars, there's uh, W3S, you know, like little challenges, like, hey, can we do this, can you do this? Um, mm -hmm. It builds your skills. Is there anything like that for Unity? Where so Unity is just C-sharp. So anything that teaches you C-sharp teaches you Unity. Um, it's, Unity is really just an API that you access using C-sharp. Uh, there's several versions you can use. Uh, the older model libraries start like in the like, equivalent of .NET 2.2, but we also have like .NET 4, 5, 5, and 6 uh, equivalents and stuff like that. Um, so if you're learning, and we also have a learn site, so if you go to unitspeed.com for slash learn, um, with tons of tutorials, and we do live sessions on Twitch every other week, um, where we're just like, hey, here's today's topic, and you ask questions and stuff, it's pretty cool. Um, <coughs> other websites that's fun to check out, check out codecombat.com, because it's like you're a wizard and your spells or your code and stuff, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. Um, yeah. And then the second part of that, how long does it take your friend to code or build a 3D mapping cleaner? Uh, I, I don't know. I can't say I've ever asked. Uh, I mean, maybe a couple days. Okay. I mean, but she makes it so like when you render it, you think it was actually a photograph. So I mean, right, yeah, I super the, photo real. I thought the, the room you had was actually a real photograph. That was yeah, right? I mean, it's yeah. insane what you can do with graphics these days, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, a lot of these things like you usually have, like for the, like, the really intense stuff, you'll have like an artist and you'll also have like a, a rigger and an animator. These are all different people that work together to build this really high quality stuff. But you can also do, you know, more basic stuff and it's pretty straightforward. Like this was all done by one person. Um, so yeah, I mean. And the one with the wizard was code? Code comment. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, great presentation, Mike, by the way. Well, thank you. I didn't, I didn't pay him to say that. <laughs> um, I had two <laughs> questions, actually. Um, can older versions still be downloaded? Absolutely. Yeah, so when you go to the download page, there's, we make it super hard to find, naturally. Um, but at the very bottom, there should be like other versions or something like that. And yeah. the other question was, will this current version work with your book? You know, the 24 hours? Yes. Uh, so. My book is a little outdated now. We've added a bunch of new features, and maybe the windows will look a little bit different, but there's nothing in the book that you can't do anymore. Uh, I'm about to start on the next version, but that means it won't be out until probably the first of the year. If anyone's ever written a book, uh, they know the editing process sucks. You can write a book really quick, and then you spend four months fighting with tech editors who, hey, I just fixed the grammatical errors of your code. What do you mean? Well, I added spaces. Do you have spaces in any of these names? And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so, okay. You didn't capitalize things. Oh, no. Why do you point to it with semicolons? Oh, my god. Uh, so yeah, that process takes a long time. That's what I was thinking about with the older version. Maybe I can get the older version that your book was written for and work from that. Absolutely. Maybe work up to the new version then. Sure. I have no idea what I'm doing. They'll send me a bunch of free copies. Call me after the first year. I'll send you one. I don't care. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, my experience was, you know, download Unity, fire it up. Okay. Go, what the hell did I just and, do? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, we're working I, on that. Because I have, because I, I do code in C sharp, right? And I was like, so you mentioned the Unity asset store, and my question is this: so if I'm perusing and I, you know, I find what I, I'm looking for, it's great, right? But what if I fail, and then I need to now have somebody make me something. Is there some other connected connect the dots that Unity's website has for other Did freelancers? You, you know, like Do you already thing. know the answer to this no, question? No, 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 I don't know. I do not know. No, no, no. Not really. We have a service called Connect. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is why I think maybe you okay. knew that. Well, well no, I, I So Connect <laughs> is a is a yeah. service we have now. So um, which I need to remember the, the URL for. Uh, so basically, it's um, LinkedIn for Unity folks. You can oh, assign okay. tasks, you can find work, you can pay folks, you can set up collaborations for free stuff, like, hey, I built this, who wants to help, or whatever. Um, you know, large companies do hiring on it, so like Blizzard hires their people through here now, and whatever. Um, so let me log in here. Actually, I, I, <laughs> I cheat a little bit. Since I work for Unity, my username on Connect is just Mike. Uh, oh, that's awesome. I was the first Mike to ever work at Unity. This is nice. true. I worked when I joined. I had like I worked with Thors and Odins and whatever, but I was the first Mike. I am Mike. Um, but you can see here. So like, here's my profile. I don't use it a whole lot. I have ten connections. Here's Viking Quest. Uh, I can see work experience, education. I can get recommendations, certifications, and I can create. 
Uh, so I can create, I can recruit or look through jobs. I can also post a job if I'm hiring, or I can post a project where I can just define smaller tasks, like, hey, I'm having a hard time with the AI of this character. I'll pay someone 20 bucks to do this. And so next week, okay, I was going to do it for free, so why not? Right? And, and, then, and then your mark is connected, and then you, know, you can give recommendations to each other. It's really cool. So actually, about the free part, so basically, um, I understand the jobs aspect of it, mm -hmm. but is there, do you have like people that actually participate in open source projects that Absolutely. are collaborative? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. On there. Just, okay. I mean, you can post a project and right. just be like, hey, who wants to help me out? Okay. Um, I mean, it's just like any other career site. So cool. many people are starved to stand out that they're like, yeah, yeah I'll hold for free because it okay. has my portfolio resume or whatever, you know, cool. and you know, hire, obviously. Are you looking for specific objects kind of thing and looking for a, a library or database? Uh, yeah, and you know, also like, uh, like you know, in Mike's demo for the Viking, you know, there was, there was the floor, there was the, you know, spe specific cloud. Maybe. So the reason I made that <laughs> demo, that, that demo was made entirely with assets from the asset store. Right. Because someone said you couldn't make an entire game just with stuff in the asset store. I'm like, I right. know you can. Right. So I just downloaded right. all right. that stuff. Right. And, yeah, right? So that's yeah. all assets from the asset store. I didn't make any of that stuff. I didn't have any of that stuff made. Right. Uh, yeah, straight from the asset store, right? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, it's great. Um, also, uh, the question of, hey, I just downloaded UD, I opened it up, and I think, what is this? I don't know what I'm doing. We're working on that. So we're building in-engine tutorials and getting cool. started. And we we recognize that we we have our engine gets downloaded seven thousand times an hour, um, and then six thousand of those people never return because they open it up and they go, I don't know, what <laughs> whatever. Well, the the, the the vibe I get is similar to like you know doing flash development, where you you're supposed to be. Like I taught a class on like creating your own fall scene, like sure. you know, at Halloween, you know, like for Halloween specific stuff. So you know, it was cool. Like you know, kids got to, they they were already learning Photoshop, and my role was to sh teach them Action Script, which they hated with a vengeance they because do. they did not like coding. But in order to uh, animate leaves and like you know, if you had a mansion which had like you know lights going on and off and like you know, making spooky effects, um, you could do that with Action Script, right? And very easily. Yeah, absolutely. You know, put it on the timeline and like yeah, write some, you know, some, some code. You already know, some know kind of how to use it. You're just yeah. going to fly. It's really, really simple. Yeah. That getting started is a little but, bit hard. But the creation of the pixels sure. becomes a barrier for many like, you know, developers. Well, in the Asset Zola, I mean, let me, uh, yeah. I don't remember the URL. I just searched for it in the Asset Zola. Um, but so this is the Unity website, unity3d.com. And there's a learn button right at the top here. And so you can look at all these different projects. So here's our live training schedule. So you can see runtime nav mesh generation is in seven days, 19 hours, and 18 minutes. Um, <laughs> they stole that from me, by the way. Um, but if you're curious, we have the archives. You can go all the way to the bottom. Oh, OK. And you can see editor basics, game objects, models and material, environment details. Um, this is back when I was on that team. So I'm going to do all of those. So you need to hear my voice over and over again. <laughs> I apologize. That's um, nice. We can also do tutorials. So tutorials. We do want full projects, roll ball, space shooters, survival shooter, tanks, adventure game, 2D roguelike, procedural generation. Maybe you want to know about audio. So here's all these videos and articles about audio, right? So <coughs> tons and tons of resources. If you go to the asset store, uh, name something. What, do I, what am I looking for in the asset store? Right. Globe. Globe. <laughs> Should start catching, right? Globe. <laughs> and so here we got a bunch of different globes. Cool. Um, yeah, if I'm looking for, you know what? This is a real common one. Um, I don't know how to write shaders. I write shaders. And so I've got shaders optimized, pro shaders, we have shader forge, uh, 26 photoelectric shaders. I don't know what photoelectric means, but that sounds really cool. Uh, reflections, glow shaders, wet shaders. There's all sorts of really cool stuff. And I can filter by premium versus free and all that stuff. So a lot of really cool stuff on there. So if you're looking for something, you can placeholder while you get started. Tons of free stuff on there. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. You mentioned uh, plugins. I messed around a little bit with uh, uh, Oculus's uh, SD, like Unity SDK. Um, there's a lot of fine print, uh, copyright stuff in the scripts. Uh, are those like? Can you use those for your Absolutely. products? As long Commercial as you don't products. change them. Yeah. Okay. No, you don't have to change it. I mean, or you can change them. It, they're given to you so that you'll use Oculus. I tend to shy away from the plugins for both uh, Vive and Oculus because I want to make myself cross-platform, okay. right? Uh, and so most of the stuff in either of those is just stuff that you can implement yourself or Unity already supports. Like I did the hand tracking, body tracking, and all that without using 
Oculus software or Vive mm -hmm. software, and, and the, all of these would work on a Vive too. It's just all open format through Unity itself. So um, those are great when I want to solve very specific problems. Like uh, Oculus has a really great, uh, I forget what it's called. They call it time warp, but it's pre-perception or something like that, where if it knows it's going to lag behind and not hit the frame rate you need to give a real VR experience, it duplicates a frame again to, to keep the frame rate. It causes a little bit of lag, but at the same point, you're not dropping frames and thus getting motion sick or whatever. That's something that Oculus has built into the software, but you could do the same thing yourself if you really want to. There we go. So, yeah, it's a trade -off. So, I don't know how, but I stumbled upon the indie games Launch here in Akron, you know, at the Akron Art Museum. Sure, they yeah. actually had a showing of it, bought the DVD. And With so, Steve Felix? Yeah, Steve yeah, Felix, yeah. yep. So that was a good memory, and it actually opened up my eyes to like independent game developers, and there are such developers oh, like every, in every city, yeah. and they're doing good work. So, comments about like, you know, independent VR studios or, you know, Titles like you know are they a thing? Are they Absolutely. are they not a thing? Like, yeah, you know? I mean like you got uh, <coughs> me was big. They did the, the, the um, uh, job simulator, which is super fun. No one's played it. And they okay. did the Rick and Morty game now and stuff like that. And they've obviously gotten much bigger. Okay. Shell games in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, most, like even the Fantastic Contraption was two friends I know from Vancouver. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean uh, VR even now is the realm of Indies. Because big companies aren't willing to shell out the cash for right. such a huge risk. Yeah, they want to create like a, a Call of Duty, game that's be you episode. know, as opposed to, okay. oh, a subset of the subset of the market has these headsets. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sell much fewer people. It's not right. worth the cash. Activision doesn't move for less than a billion dollars, mm -hmm. right? So VR is firmly in the grasp of Indies for now. Yes. Well, what kind of headset that, that you have? And I'm assuming that's cross platform. This is an Oculus Rift. It is a proprietary platform. Unity's cross platform, so I can plug any headset I want into it. Oh, okay. Right. This this is a computer screen strapped to your face. That's they try to convince you it's magical and whatever. <laughs> it's a computer screen, a monitor, and two accelerometers, and that's it's what it is. So they have, and that's not connected to a phone, right? But I've seen the Samsung ones. The Samsung is your phone. You put it in the headset. Okay. Same with the car. <coughs> yeah. Yes, sir. What are your thoughts on the VR-ready laptops, like Razer and then I think MSI? Well, so I don't have any affiliation with either. Just throwing that out there. I pay you for my laptops. Uh, the Razer one's been awesome. The MSIs keep dying on us. Okay. Asus ones do. Uh, Asus ones get graphical issues. They don't do heat. What about uh, the Razer Core? The Razer Core has been on B Road. Um, this has a 1060 in it. It does every VR ultra settings that I've ever tried. It's great. It's what I do in my presentations and stuff like that. The core unit's always funny on a laptop. And they say they fixed this now, but I'm not super sure. So the way the core units work is you know, you, you hook it up and it's got this external graphics card or whatever, but for a long time, VR headsets were required to be on the same graphics card as your primary display. While well, laptops, mm -hmm. primary display is built in, hooked into the integrated graphics. So you couldn't get VR to run because, not because it wasn't powerful enough, because oopsie, it needs to be the same card and it's not. Mm -hmm. um, they say they fixed it, I've not blown the dust off of mine to try. It's still just sitting on my shelf, so, but, yeah. But these have 1060s or 1080s, and it's a lot of need, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they say it works. <laughs> have we reached the end of questions? <laughs>